Hello, and welcome to PMG TV. I'm Chris Barsis, head genius at Personal Mac Geniuses. On this episode, we're going to look at how to restore a computer that has been backed up to a t network time machine when there is no network. You would think that you could just go over and grab the hard drive from your network-based time machine, drag it over to the machine that needs restoring, plug it in, and bang, everything would work. Unfortunately, it's not quite that simple. On the network-based time machines, there is a different file structure than the file structure that is used for the single machine time machine. So you're going to have to go into the network-based time machine disk and the information that it's stored and get it into a position where the single machine restore process can actually understand what to do. And I'm going to show you how to do that here in this little video. I'm going to assume that you've already gotten your image information off of your network-based time machine, either by putting a new uh, hard drive on there and copying it, or taking the full uh, drive that you're currently using and moving it over, or some fashion like that. I'm also going to assume that you've already booted yourself into recovery mode. Uh, if you need more information on either of these, go please check the post. Uh, it's at personalmacgeniuses.com. Unfortunately, since you're booting into recovery mode, there's no way I can make a screencast the way I normally would. So what I ended up having to do was taking pictures with a camera. So obviously this is less than optimal, but I think you'll get the idea. Once we've booted into recovery mode, you're going to get a little screen in the middle of your monitor that looks something like this. You'll notice that you have four choices, one of them being restore from time machine, and then, of course, uh, all the way at the bottom, you have Disk Utility. You're going to want to click on Disk Utility first. Your next step is to just roll down there to that bottom corner and click on that Continue button. After a moment or so, you're going to get the Disk Utility to pop up. And you'll see that on the left-hand side, there's a panel there with all your hard drives in it. You're going to want to look in that panel for the hard drive that has your backup information on it. In my case, it's that two terabyte unit there. You can see that it has a logical drive of PMG backup. You wanna be sure that you click on the actual physical drive itself. That's the two terabyte thing up there, or you're not gonna get the correct uh, tabs up at the top over here on your right. So now that we have the right tabs up, go ahead and click on the restore tab up there in the corner. Next, you're gonna to need to click on this little button over here on the side that says image. This is how you're going to actually be able to browse this hard drive and find the disk image that you need in order to restore it. When you click the image button, a pane will come down from the top, allowing you to select the hard drive. Obviously, in my case here, I'm going to select the PMG backup. Next, you're going to need to click on the shared items folder. You may have to search for it, but it'll be there. Then you're going to need to click on the backups folder that you're going to find inside. And then you're going to need to actually find the disk image file that corresponds to the machine that you are going to be restoring. In my case, that's called HAL. Once you've found it, go ahead and click on the open button in the corner of the pane. The disk utility takes us back to the main page. And as you can see, we now have the disk image available to us so we can actually go and mount it. We can mount the image by clicking on it and then going up to the top and clicking on the open icon. Once it's clicked, we get a little mounting dialog that pops up. And when the mounting dialog is finished mounting, you'll see that we have a virtual hard drive down there right underneath the sparse disk image. At this point, we're done inside disk utility. So we'll go up to file, pull down to quit, which will bring us back to our main menu. Now that we've got the disk mounted, we're back to our main utilities window again. And now we're going to click on Restore from Time Machine Backup. And then we're going to click on the Continue button in the lower right hand corner. After that, you're going to see this dialog box that talks about restoring your system. Just go ahead and immediately go down to the bottom and click on the Continue button. Our next screen asks us to select a backup source. 
Since we've mounted that disk image that has the backup information on it, you should see something along these lines here. Once you've selected the source, click continue at the bottom. On the next screen, you're going to have to select a backup date and time. Obviously, you want to pick one that is as close to the current date and time as possible without actually having whatever it was that damaged the system be a part of the backup. Once you've selected that, click on the continue button. Next, you're going to be asked to select a destination. In my case, I want my information put back onto my main hard drive. Once I select the disk, you press restore at the bottom. Finally, you're going to get a warning that tells you that the disk you're going to restore onto is going to be erased. Obviously, this is fine, so just press continue, and that's all there is to it. Sooner or later, all of the data will get back on there. In my case, it was about a half a terabyte, which took almost four hours. Your mileage is going to vary. Hopefully, you'll never need to actually use this little trick, but if you do, now you know how. As usual, you can always call me at any one of the numbers listed on the screen or visit me at my website.